All right then, so now we've created our first Netlify function right here, Super Mario, and we call that from the guides component right here. And we just log out the data to the console. And we can do all of this locally because we installed the Netlify CLI to run Netlify dev and get that proxy server that allows us to run these functions locally before even deploying them. So all this is working, but remember the whole point of us using these Netlify functions is to protect some data from unauthenticated users. In our case, we want to use a function to send back some guides to the front end, but only if that user is logged in. If they're not, we don't want to send it back. So if I go to the guides page and I'm logged in, then the function sends all of that data back so we can show it on this page. If I'm not logged in, we'll send back maybe some kind of error or something else instead. So we need a way to authenticate requests when they come into a function like this. And fortunately, Netlify makes that pretty easy to do. So when a request is made to a Netlify function, Netlify can determine if that request was made from a logged in user. And it does this by looking for the presence of a valid user access token on the request. If it's there, the user is logged in. If it's not, they're not logged in. So let's try this out with a brand new function. So let's create that function inside the functions folder. I'm going to call it guides because that's what we're getting right. Some guides. Oops, not spelled that correctly. Let's rename that to guides instead of guide. And then inside here, we'll create the function. So exports dot handler. We set that equal to an async function. Now inside this function, we're going to take in two arguments automatically, the event and context. Now we'll talk more about that later on. And in particular, we're going to talk about this context object, which is the context of the request. This is how we're going to determine whether a user is logged in. But again, we'll talk about that later. Now, what I'm going to do is just paste in a bit of data right here. So I have a constant called guides and I set that equal to an array of object where each object is a guide. So it has a title and an author. So this is the data we're going to send back. Now, in a real application, you wouldn't just hard code this data here, probably. You probably have it in a database somewhere, communicate with the database and grab that data. But for the sake of this tutorial, I want to keep the focus on identity and functions and I don't want to introduce too much like a database. But maybe in the future, I will do something with that. Anyway, we have this guide's data. And this is ultimately what we want to return to the user. So what I'm going to do is say right here, return. We return an object where the status code is going to be 200, meaning everything is okay with the request. And then the body is going to be the data, but we have to stringify it. So JSON dot stringify, and then we pass in the guides. Okay, so this is just a simple function, a bit like before. We're just returning a bit of data, the guides. So before we add in any extra logic to check the authentication of the user, let's go and request this function from our guides page. So the only real thing we need to do right here is just change the endpoint of this function. So instead of it being Super Mario, it's going to be guides like so. Now, when I do that, I'm going to restart the server. So if I go over here, I'm going to control C to exit this process. Then I'm going to run Netlify dev again, just because I've added a new function and I want it to pick up that function and uh, so we can access it using this server. So once I've done that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to open up the console and now we can see this right here, this array with three items inside it. So we're getting that data back, which is good. Now, this is fine, but anyone can access the data and I only want to allow users that are logged in to access the data. So you can see right now I'm logged out and I can see this. So how do we restrict this data to only people that are logged in? Well, that's where Netlify identity comes into play inside our function over here. We need to detect whether a user is logged in or not. If they are logged in, we're going to return this data. If they're not logged in, we'll return a different response with an error status code. So the way we do this is by using this context object that we get access to automatically inside Netlify functions. And this contains information about the context of the request. Now on that, we have something called the client context. So context dot client context. And this contains information about the context of the client making the request. In our case, the browser. So if the browser that's making the request is coming from a person that is logged in, then we're going to get access to a user property right here. So 
this property is going to be present only when there is a valid user token coming in on the request, i.e. when a user is logged in. So what I could do is say if, and then surround all of this inside the if statement, and then paste the return inside this. And that means that only if there is a user property present on the client context, i.e. if a user token is present inside the request, then we're going to return this data because if that token is present, it means the user is logged in. If that's not the case, we're going to return something else instead. So down here, I'm going to say return. And inside that return statement, we'll do a status code, which is going to be 401, meaning unauthenticated. Let's spell this correctly for a start, status code. And then we'll also send some data back. We'll stringify this, so json.stringify. And we're just going to send back an object with a message property like so, and it will say, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you must be logged in to see this. All right then, so if now we send a request from the browser whereby a user is logged in, this is gonna be present, and we're gonna return this. If we send a request where the user is logged out, then we're sending this. So if I save this now, what I'm gonna do is come over here and refresh. Now, once I refresh, you can see now we're not logged in, right? We're sending this request from the guides page right here to get this data, but we get this error message back. So this is working, or at least you might think it's working correctly at the minute. Now, watch what happens when I log in. So I'm gonna say mario at the netninja.co.uk and then test one, two, three, four. I'm gonna log in and then once I log in, I'm gonna refresh again and it's going to try to make this request again and we still get an error. Now, two things. First of all, I want to be able to run this every time the user changes. So let me first of all get the user. So I'm going to say const and we want the user and that's going to be from use context. I'm going to press on this one to auto import it and we want the auth context and we need to import that as well. So let me do that at the bottom. Import auth context from, and we need to come out of the current directory, then into stores, and then we want the auth context file. So we're grabbing this user so that we can pass it into the dependency array, oops. And that means that whenever the user changes, i.e. if they're on this page and they log in, then it's gonna try to refetch the data because it's gonna run this again when this is a dependency. Whenever this changes, this value, it's gonna run this. So now if I save it, we shouldn't have to refresh every time the user either logs out or logs in. So if I log out, watch this, it's gonna hopefully try to make the request again. Yeah, it does, and we get the error back. If I try to log in, so mario at the net, ninja.co.uk test one two three four once i log in it's going to try to make that request again down here we should see that if it works very slow and it does but still we get the 401 response and we get this error message right here so what's going on because we're logged in and we're trying to make this request well by default we don't send the user token inside this fetch request so when the request comes in and we're looking at this the user is not going to be there because it cannot find the token from the user because we're not sending it by default when we use this fetch request. We need to send it inside the headers of this request. So we add in a second argument to the fetch, which is an object. And inside here, we can say that we want to send some headers. So let me do that. Headers, which is an object. And oops, this needs to be a column. Inside here, we need the authorization if I can spell it, the authorization header, and we need to pass the token. Now, the way we do that is by saying bearer and then a space, and then we concatenate the user token. Now we have access to the user right here, okay? Let me just for a second comment this out, and what I'm gonna do is console.log the user down here, and then I'm gonna say dot token like so. So if I save this and come over here, you can see we have this token. This is the token of the user. And on this, we have the access token. This is the thing we need to send in the fetch request. So 
user.token.access token like so oops that should be underscore so this thing right here we need to send this token with the fetch request right here and when we send it with the fetch request and we run this function that is when the function detects that token and if it's there and if the token is valid that's when we get access to the user property so when we have access to that it returns the correct data if we're logged in so what we need to do is pass this user token right here so let's copy that and we need to pass it into the fetch down here so let's uncomment this and after bearer we pass in the user token like so all right then so this still might not work let me save this and i want to come over here you can see in here it does work we get that data back right but watch what happens if i refresh over here uh we get a big error all right and it says cannot read property token of null and that's because remember to begin with the user right here is null until we've established that connection with netlify to figure out the user so what we really want to do is wait until auth is ready before we try to run this so i can grab auth ready from this context because remember if we take a look inside our auth context we have the auth ready state right here which is only true after the init event so after we've established that connection we set auth ready to be true so at that point we want to make this fetch request so i'm going to say if and then auth ready like so open up my curly braces and then close them down here is that right yep okay so now we want to scoot this in and scoot this in like so so now only when this is ready are we going to try to make this fetch request so if i save this now and refresh then now we don't get that big for error let's just do it once more for good measure yep it waits until auth is ready and then it makes the request in our case it figures out that we're logged in and it tries to make that request but watch what happens when i log out you can see now it says cannot read property token of null and if i refresh then it's not going to do that but if i was logged in and then log out it does get that error and that's because when we don't have a user and we're still trying to make this request right here we're trying to access the token on the user but the user is null because we're not logged in so we only want to attach these headers right here if we have a user so the way we do that is just by saying user then a logical and and then only when we have a user will it attach this part to the fetch request right here if we don't have a user it won't attach that and so therefore it won't try to access the token it will still make the request and in this case we'll get back the 401 response because we're not logged in but there won't be any errors so let's give this another go so now if i refresh you can see we don't get back any data if i log in as mario at the net ninja dot code uk and then test one two three four login you can see i get this data back now and then if i log out you can see now we get the error message back because we've logged out if i log in again let's just try this once more mario at the net ninja dot code uk and test one two three four and try to log in hopefully we'll get the data again yep we do right here and if i refresh when i'm logged in we should get the data as well awesome so now this is good this is all working we're only getting the data back when a user is logged in now one more thing we need to do and that is to pass in here as a dependency auth ready because whenever this changes we also need to rerun the hook because watch this if i was to log out i noticed this before and refresh we don't get the error message back right and it should still try to make that request so that we get that error back to say look we're not logged in and the reason it's not making that request is because it's not rerunning this use effect function when the auth ready changes only when the user changes so we need to pass that in as well auth ready like so so that when this is ready even if we're not logged in it still tries to make that request so now if i'm logged out and try to refresh now we can see we get this error message back and that's better all right then so now we've got this function up and running so that it only sends data back if we're logged in in the next video we'll try to output that data to the browser and if they're not logged in maybe we'll show an error message instead